Thank you everyone um, being here for today's work session. Um, we're going to hear about um, the park system plan to update um, our greenways. Hi, Lisa Schiffbauer with Raleigh Parks. I'm going to update you on where we're at with the greenway master plan implementation. My focus is going to be, um, at the end of the presentation, it's going to be on some of the recommendations in the plan um, for the comprehensive plan updates and unified development ordinance updates. Okay, so the Cavadero Greenway Master Plan was adopted in April of 2022. The original plan was created in 1976 and last updated in 1989. The recently adopted plan communicates the environmental, recreational, and transportation benefits of the Greenway system and establishes clear priorities and recommendations for expanding and reinvesting in Raleigh's Greenway program. The themes or categories listed here is essentially the framework of the Greenway Master Plan. Within this framework are recommendations that focus on the growing needs of the system. There are 170 action items that are categorized in or as ongoing, immediate, which are zero to two years implementation, and short term, which are three to five years implementation following the adoption. Additionally, the plan includes a 100-day action plan, which outlines crucial first steps to realizing the community's vision for the Greenway system. Staff have implemented many priority items within this 100-day action plan. We have also have implemented immediate and short-term action items. In the next few slides, I'll focus on a few of our accomplishments that have been implemented since the adoption. So first, covering the new and reinvestment projects that were adopted in the 2022 Parks Bond. We have a total of five like solid projects, and then the Neighborhood and Community Connections projects, which we are currently um, doing an analysis and city council will have the opportunity to view uh, selected priority sites for that program. But we have three projects that would be new extensions of the Greenway system and two projects that are reinvestment projects. And those reinvestment projects are replacing asphalt structures, bridges and that type of thing. So our investment in safety um, is a list of some things we've accomplished um, over the past couple years. In fiscal year 22, uh, there was a penny for parks funding, which provided funding for the park and greenway system. Um, those funds were used to reinvest in replacement of asphalt, replacement of structures, and just general enhancement of, it, of existing infrastructure. Pavement markings, which is a picture on the right. Um, these are not actors. These are actually people utilizing the pavement striping as it was intended for, people staying in their lane. And so that was a big accomplishment for our department. Tunnel lighting, we um, are finishing up the installation of lighting the rest of our tunnels in our system and converting those lights to 24-7 operation and LED lighting. The Greenway Safety and Etiquette campaigns, last year we implemented Better with a Buddy and we're currently launching Kindness in Motion. We have videos, yard signs, social media, on-site engagement with Caught Being Kind stickers that we're handing out. Um, and this addresses things like speed limit, how to pass on the Greenway, and information about how to navigate our center line striping. 
we have done a good job in being proactive um, with advertising detours and closures associated with projects, Raleigh water projects, any kind of disruption that we have in our system. We have projects um, that we're currently working on that are helping improve safety. We have a couple of uh, bridge replacement, the decking replacement, so slippery bridges, replacing that uh, decking with non-slippery materials, such as concrete. Uh, and then in 2022, the budget was, budget was allocated for dedication of a unit of six sworn officers and one sergeant to enhance public safety in our parks and on our trails. This is in addition to our Greenway vol Volunteer Program that was formed in 2012. Uh, that program utilizes volunteers, which are active Greenway users, to monitor trail activity from a safety standpoint, including speeding, improper use of trails, and practicing proper etiquette. <coughs> so we also have implemented new amenities across our system, adding bike repair stations, many benches, and trash receptacles. We also are in the process of implementing uh, the selected Greenway Innovation Project, which is glow-in-the-dark pavement striping. This is a picture of a road, um, kind of looks like a Greenway, but this is the idea for that innovation project. Um, in addition to that, adding QR code system along the system where you can report issues, uh, trail closures, where we can advertise events and volunteer activities and to get updates. For wayfinding, we're also in the process of replacement existing signage with our current sign package. We are working on a wayfinding plan to develop a better way to help users navigate through the system, uh, general improved signage, and we're also working on updating our Greenway pocket map, which a lot of people use on our system. So moving on to the heaviest part of this presentation, uh, these are recommendations of the, of the Greenway Master Plan that have not been implemented. As I mentioned, we have implemented many of the priority items from the 100-day action plan. Um, and now staff is seeking council's guidance to continue to pursue additional action items, including revisions to the comprehensive plan and associated updates to the UDO. The community's vision for Greenway's Raleigh system must be reflected in the 2030 comprehensive plan in order to become a reality. An amendment to the comprehensive plan will incorporate various new and revised policy action items, um, policy items and action items that are recommended in the Greenway Master Plan. Proposed comprehensive plan amendments fall into these categories that are listed under the icons. I'll go through each of these and give a few examples of the amendments. So Raleigh's Greenway system began as a planning effort to effectively manage stormwater runoff in flood-prone areas. The system has been used to protect primary waterways and tributaries throughout Raleigh, defining corridors of the system, and adding opportunities for recreation along a series of linear parks. We have done a really good job at this, but there are areas where we can improve to improve the resiliency of our system and protection of the open space corridors. So amendments such as increasing the width of easement dedication to minimize impacts to infrastructure so that we can have a more resilient system. So currently, um, a lot of our corridors uh, require 50 foot dedication. And so we're looking to potentially expand that to 75 feet, which would give us more ability and more flexibility within those corridors to build our greenway. Uh, we are also looking at exploring expanding dedication of greenway easement to non-residential development. Uh, currently, dedication is just required for residential development. We're also looking to enhance green stormwater infrastructure that is, that is adjacent to developments or adjacent to greenways, developments that are adjacent to green greenways. Raleigh has long understood the greenway system 
as both an environmental conservation tool and a place for people to recreate. The plan's recommendation for comp plan amendments had a new, adds a new point of focus, and that is ensuring that the greenway system serves an extension of Raleigh's larger transportation system. So some of those items that we could amend the comp plan to reflect this is evaluating lighting in specific corridors or locations within our system. We're strongly prioritizing and emphasizing connections to local and regional systems and the integration of our system with other modes such as transit. And I would say that we are doing that um, just as a city um, in general, but emphasizing those things in the comp plan would help uh, require that from a development perspective. So new developments oriented on the Greenway have a unique opportunity to benefit from this public amenity and contribute to strengthening the physical, environmental, social, and economic health of a city. Some examples of communities that have done a really good job at Greenway-oriented development are places like New Orleans with Lafitte Greenway, um, Minneapolis, the Midtown Greenway, North and Park Development on Atlanta's Beltline, and the 606 in Chicago. Creating incentives and flexibility for developer-built trails and associated amenities would be helpful, would be helpful to build out our Greenway system and provide those connections to the system. Another option for a comp plan amendment that is being recommended is establishing a, a fee in lieu system for Greenways. In order to preserve and enhance user experience and the natural aesthetic character of the Greenway network, new development adjacent to specific classified um, trail trails should provide additional setbacks, underserved buffers, tree plantings, native landscaping, and other techniques of visual screening between developed areas and these open space corridors. What we're seeing is a lot of the undeveloped areas being developed and those natural buffers that you once saw along the Greenway system are disappearing. And then lastly, we are looking to update terminology for edits, for clarity and consistency across other planning documents. So getting on to the UDO, the future evolution of the Greenway system will rely on working with the private development to protect designated open space quarters and build out the full system so that we could create this integrated multimodal transportation network. UDO changes will be necessary to implement and enforce comprehensive plan amendments that I just discussed. The Greenway Master Plan includes proposed UDO updates based on uh, precedent research uh, to bring Raleigh's regulatory framework in line with the community's expectations and nationwide's best practices. Raleigh staff have been engaged in preliminary discussions with guidance from the city attorney's office, Department of Transportation, and planning and development. And so before we begin that uh, process and drafting desired, drafting desired UDO text changes, we need to do some further legal analysis um, we are proposing UDO text changes that will fall into one of three categories. The first one, the Greenway easement location width requirements. We discussed in the comp plan um, the including of the non-residential. Currently, the dedication just includes dedication for residential development. Um, there are a lot of non-residential developments that benefit from use of the Greenway system. Uh, currently, the dedication is limited to flood prone areas. And so if we're really looking at establishing a system that's connected within the larger transportation network, we have to look at dedication outside of those areas. And then increasing the 50 feet to the 75 feet is important just to give us that <coughs> flexibility. So trail construction requirements and development incentives, this is um, directly related to uh, requirement of developer built trails. Um, a lot of our neighboring communities uh, have systems that grew from developers building um, portions of the trail, um, now having a much more interconnected system 
currently, if a developer does build trails within our system, it's purely voluntary. Um, or it's part associated with um, a rezoning. So the UDO would come into effect for that requirement whenever we have site plan, when we don't have rezoning, but it's essentially just a site plan review. And some of those incentives that we had that were recommended in the master plan were allowing things like the amenity requirement within developments for the Greenway to um, complement that or suffice for that requirement, and then also a potential fee in lieu program. And then lastly, um, encouraging more trail-oriented development um, in our design standards, so having more front-facing greenway exposure to development, requiring developers to provide those amenities that um, are associated with uh, greenways in trail-oriented development, and then aligning that alignment or aligning that design with our street manual. And so next steps, um, broken this out into comprehensive plan and UDO, which have different uh, alignments. Uh, for the comprehensive plan, we're looking at finalizing draft policy and action item language, um, taking that to the Parks Board for review in their comment, and then submitting an application to amend the comprehensive plan. That does not require city council action. Um, so moving on to the UDO text changes, a little bit different uh, framework here. We would have to do a lot more work into the legal fe feasibility of some of those items that I mentioned. Um, continued work with planning and development, um, city attorney's office, get some input from the parks board, prepare some final draft ordinance language, and then seek council's authorization on the final text change proposal and have that referred to the planning commission. Whew. Okay, that was a lot. Mm -hmm. Questions? I know you have them. <laughs> Councilmember Harrison, and I, I have a couple of comments too. Okay. Yeah, thank you so much. Um, the Greenway system is amazing, so excited to see all these updates. I, that's how I got to work today. Um, curious if this 50 foot to 75 foot increase, um, does that limit or preclude Greenway building? I'm just wondering, do we always have that much space available or will that be a constraint? <clears throat> so the 50 foot currently, it's th that dedication, that space can only be used for Greenway area so it would be the physical trail and then it would be you know the shoulders and any kind of landscaping um, natural buffers would be included in that so with the 75 foot expansion we would not allow just like we don't allow into the 50 feet we would not allow any encroachment okay and you don't see that as being a constraint on developing the system out not at this time. I think we would have to, um, again, we'd have to evaluate that a little bit more, but I don't think that it would um, compromise any um, development um, relationship there. Thanks. Um, Council Member Branch. Just um, to piggyback on that, some of our current trail runs through communities. So how would that would this impact any existing trails that are currently in place that may not have the allowable 75? Are we going to keep those at 50 if they're 50? So there definitely are areas that were more constrained. Um, I th the way that the current ordinance is worded is that that area could be flexible. So if you have 200 feet, linear feet of, of dedication, you can, prov you can make up some of that area and maybe the southern portion of the site, and then maybe it get 50 feet on the northern side. So it's more about the square footage, the total square footage, than it is about being consistent with that 75 feet. So if you took 75 feet times 200, that as long as that development is providing that X amount of square feet, 
That's currently how the ordinance is written. And I think that's good because that provides flexibility. And that's one thing that we do want to do is provide the flexibility, um, keep the flexibility for developers as well. Okay. And my second question is for the areas where, um, actually go back two slides. I, I'm sorry, go back one, just one. For the text change, yeah. historically for a text change, we have to authorize the work on the text change. Like, I'm trying to understand the process here, how this seems a little different. Yeah, that, um, I may need some help with that. Just to clarify, I think this is just an update. We'll be coming back to you at the appropriate time to request the text change authorization. I think they're just giving you a status update and letting you know what to expect given community interest. I'd say, too, that previously uh, we started the process with an authorization. Now we kind of, it's at the end of the process. So right now we're just telling you we're going to do the work, and then you guys will still see it in the future. Okay. Councilmember Jones. Thank you so much for being here. I have a few quick things. Um, first, and this is not ser too serious, but trail-oriented development will need a new acronym because TOD is taken. So maybe like mm -hmm. TROD, I don't know, there's a big one there. Um, and then the glow in the dark, uh, do the greenways close at dusk like the parks? They do, yes. So the glow in the dark would be when no one is there? So technically the greenway does close at dusk, right? And really to align our system with um, being part of the multimodal network, um, one of the things in our master plan is to evaluate expansion of those hours. Um, and so think about at, in the winter when the Greenway does close at five technically, but there's still people commuting home um, from work and so the glow in the dark, yes, that is something that more so applies to extended hours of operation. Um, the goal this, to set that up for when we are, okay. No, that and that glow in the sense. dark area that we're looking is in the innovation district, which will be located along Crabtree Creek, um, Anderson Drive to Atlantic Avenue. Great, great. And then the last thing that I have, if you can go back to the slide with the map, with the dotted lines and the existing trails, I just want to uplift, because I've been working on, with you guys on this for a few years, and on the steering committee, I had raised this point as well. In my district, over in District E, the Greenway is set to go around Briar Creek Country Club, and we have a community center, Briar Creek Community Center, right across the street, that it doesn't touch from what I remember. And I just wanna highlight that as a big concern as we're trying to connect community centers with it, and encircling the Briar Creek Country Club feels like a, a benefit to not a lot of the city, whereas connecting it to the community center feels like it would be a better connection for community. So I just wanted okay. to uplift that like we did in the steering committee, just make sure that it's still on your radar. Okay, thank you. Thank you so much. Mayor Pro Tem. Yes, um, Councilmember Jones, this question and your response just reminded me that when I first got elected to council, I think one of the first topics we talked about or we had a work session was um, connecting the greenways with transportation to figure out how we can make them more active transportation corridors, particularly for multimodal. Um, and so I love the idea that we're forward planning with sort of this glow in the dark, but then the work plan is aimed towards looking at the hours. I do think we should expedite that if at all possible. Um, because as we're building out more of our bike network and scooter network and ways to get people around, those really are safe ways for folks to get places. And so I do think we need to maybe speed that up or prioritize it as, as much as possible. And it sounds like folks are already doing it, and so we probably need to align our policies and infrastructure investments into how folks are choosing to get around anyway. Thank you. Okay, I just wanted to acknowledge first off the work. Um, thank you for that. A um, couple of, several weeks ago, um, most of us were at um, the Chamber's intercity visit to Atlanta, and um, many people were enthralled by the Beltline project there. 
Um, and there was a lot of conversation about our greenway system versus, say, hey, the Beltline system, where there's, it has triggered billions of dollars in new development and really become an amenity um, for the residents. Um, the comparison was made with our greenway system in the sense that many of our trails are in flood zones. And, you know, so you can't develop around the greenways. But I was encouraged to see on there the um, TOD, um, Trail Oriented Development, because I think that that is really important for use and access. Um, we've talked for a long time now about, okay, could we have a mini brewery with a dog park, like on a Greenway Trail, for instance, um, or just things of that nature. And so I, I think really paying attention to where our greenway system is and how we can um, promote um, development would be um, beneficial to the community, but also really um, our tax base as well. So thank you for that. Um, Council Member Patton, did you have something? Okay. Yeah, and just had a, a quick question. I know you're going to come back to us for authorization, so there, there might not be like a lot of meat on the bones, but I was curious that um, the slide that you have with summarizing the UDO changes you'll be pursuing, um, that one. The I just was uh, wondering if you could clarify trail construction requirements and development incentives. Like, are you considering one or the other for legal reasons? legal sensitivity reasons or both in different contexts or what? So we know that there's a lot of, um, well, from what we've heard from our stakeholder group during the master plan, when we discussed um, having developer built trails, there was a lot of feedback from that discussion that, um, you know, requiring more and more from development. And so, We've always had this mindset that um, in order to have a devel have developer build trails that maybe offering incentives to to them um, would be beneficial in in getting them to to build them because the cost of of building the trails is expensive. So um, it's just an idea that we have at this time, um, and I don't know if that will move forward with offering those incentives. I think it's something we have to work through and talk about a lot more. Um, but right now we're recommending that we require developers to build the trails and offer some incentives for them to do that. Thank you. Thanks for this. Okay. Do we have any additional questions? Okay. Thank you so much for the update. Really appreciate it. Um, Karen, I have a question. Do you, I need to make the closed session motion now? Yes. Okay. Um, so a motion is in order to enter closed session pursuant to GS 143-318-11A3 to consult with the city attorney in order to preserve the attorney-client privilege. Do I have a second? Second. Okay. Um, I'll, in favor? Aye. Okay. Um, Motion um, passes, and we are going to be meeting in 303. Thank you.